this example, I'm going to put a nonlinear damper custom component into my model and experience a problem that I'll have to debug. So I've already created that custom component. I'm going to drag it in. There's my nonlinear damper, and I'm going to put it on the shaft. Now, before I simulate, let's have a look at those equations. You can see here I've said that tau, the torque applied, is negative d1 times the angular velocity, so that's the time derivative of the angle, minus d2, so some other coefficient, times the time derivative of the angle is angular velocity squared. So that's my nonlinear term right there, squared. And I've given default values of d1 and d2 as 1. So that's the equation that I would expect to see. Torque being negative because it's slowing down. So when I simulate this model, what happens? Well, we see something very unexpected happen. We see that the current uh, becomes unrealistically large, as well as the shaft torque, 10 to the 29, the shaft speed. So it looks like I've got some exponential growth happening here. So that seems incorrect. So again, I'm going to use that disable button just to make sure that my model was working correctly before, because it's quite possible that that custom component was not the problem. So let me just verify that my model does work properly before. Great, okay, those were the same results that we saw last time. So I know that I've isolated the problem to my custom component. And that's why it's a good idea as you're building your model to keep simulating as you're building it. And then you'll, you'll find out that when you make an incremental change that you've introduced the problem. It usually either isolates that problem to the component, the new components or new subsystems, or it points back to something in your model that was incorrect before. Well, in this case, we're pretty sure I've introduced this new custom component that's causing a problem. Let's go back and look at those equations. What I've got here is that the torque is going to be negative for a positive angular velocity. Well, that might make sense if you think of delivering torque to a shaft. You want to deliver a torque that slows down the shaft. However, in the Delica and in Maple Sim, the torque and any through variable is always referenced going into the component. So let's go down and look at the basic block diagram describing when we talk about torque, we talk about torque coming into the component. Well, maybe you could think about it like this. How much torque is being absorbed by that component when it undergoes the conditions we're expecting? Keeping that in mind, it seems that our torque is actually referenced in the opposite direction as we're maybe used to. Like we think about it delivering torque. Here it's actually taking torque out of the system. The true variable going into the component. So what I'm going to do is just change my two equations around. Parameters are fine, no initial conditions to think about. I'm going to scroll down. I don't have to change anything about the variable mapping. I'm going to regenerate that component. I say, yes, I want to replace that component. Okay, so let's replace that component with a new one. And let's see what happens when I do that. So there we go. We see a very similar plot as before. And what I like to do just to make sure my components are working, I put them to extreme values just to make sure. So let's put it extremely down. Let's make sure that our results change. Great. So it is still moving very, very slowly. We turn that damper up. So we found the problem. Uh, we were experiencing exponential growth because we had uh, basically a positive feedback loop in the system. As the shaft was speeding up, there was a torque being applied to speed it up even more. So that was the problem. Anytime you see exponential growth, it's usually because of a through variable referenced in the wrong direction or because of an unintentional positive feedback loop. So we managed to find that again by using that disable button and by having a closer look at the direction of torque in this model.